Hi, I'm Therese Aben from Golden Key Realty, and today we're going to speak about childcare. We're here at Kangaroo Kids in North Branch, New Jersey. I'm going to speak with Kathy Fagley, the director of Kangaroo Kids and the TV host of Today's Child. Often buyers ask us how to seek out good childcare, and today Kathy Fagley is going to help us out. Hi, we're here with Kathy Fagley. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Teresa. Um, today we're going to talk about, you know, buyers are really concerned when they come into an area, how to find child care. So if you can fill us in a little bit, we'd appreciate it. Okay. So I have a few questions prepared. Sure. Okay. So the first thing I'd like to ask you is when you come to a preschool, what would you look for in your staff? One of the most important things I think for parents to look for, Teresa, um, is the staffing. Um, it doesn't matter so much what the facility is like, it doesn't matter, um, I mean, as long as it's clean and neat. Most important is how the teachers interact with the children. So that when a parent goes in to visit a school, they should look for teachers um, that are down on the children's level and interacting with them eye to eye, uh, talking to them. Um, being responsive to their needs and I always recommend that parents kind of keep an ear out even the room that they're not visiting for just the general philosophy of the school you should hear happy sounds you should see children smiling and happy it doesn't mean a child may not cry once in a while but how the teacher responds is what makes the difference is the teacher um, very warm and welcoming and responsive to the child's needs so you want to see smiling teachers teachers at their eye level teachers that are really talking almost like an adult conversation eye to eye contact even if the child is just babbling that kind of responsiveness mm -hmm. is really important for a child's development terrific so you mentioned the facility. So what should they look for in the facility? Well, in the facility, you want to see a place, obviously, that's clean and neat and well organized. Um, again, sometimes when they're finger painting or making Play-Doh, it gets a little messy at times. <laughs> but basically, you want to see a clean um, environment. And you want to see lots of opportunity for children to select toys. So that in the youngest rooms, you want to see multiple toys. So that at that stage, children really don't know how to share. Mm -hmm. So that you give them other choices. Um, you want to see toys that are at children's eye level, so that children can get some toys on their own and not always have to have them access from the teacher. Um, and again, things that are in good report, lots of books. You want to see books out that children mm -hmm. can have easy access to. Um, and things that are safe. You don't want to see sharp edges. You want to look for the safety features like making sure that the outlets are covered um, so that it's a safe environment for children also. Okay. So safety. Now that we touched on safety, let's talk a little bit more about safety. Um, people talk about, well, how is my child safe all day? You know, we, you said mentioned outlets and sharp edges, and we see people come and going, so coming and going. So tell us, what is it that you do or which preschools should have to protect the children? Okay, in this day and age, that is extremely important. We have an entire emergency plan um, that the Branch Break Police Department helped us at Kangaroo Kids to create the plan. Um, also, you should see when you come into the facility, there should be some um, way to stop a, a random access to the building, a uh, code to the door, a uh, buzzer system, something so that people just can't come in and out. In, in Kanker Kids, we have a system where there's a keypad and the parents have immediate access so they could come to visit the school at any time which is important that parents can have access to the school but anyone that's not part of the school um, cannot enter without being specifically let in through the office system so that's a very important one easy access to make sure they do have an emergency plan in place make sure they do practice fire drills and emergency evacuation procedures um, those are all in this day and age things that you really have to be concerned about um, security measures that um, you know who picks up the child is mm -hmm. there a very specific security of who is approved um, if so we don't know someone they must we must have written permission um, and they also must have show picture ID when they come with that written permission so it's a very elaborate um, dismissal procedure um, that we have in place at kangaroo kids that's fantastic okay um, so we, what about the programming what do you think how sh how academic should the programs be and what should children be getting out of preschool or childcare? Thank you. 
Um, there's a lot of things. There's lots of domains of learning, and academics is an important part in this day and age. More than when I went to school and in kindergarten we played on slides and things like that. Now, mm -hmm. um, academics is a focus, but it has to be done in the right way. If it's not done in the right way, then it has effects later on for the children. Um, we believe very much in hands-on learning, where the children learn by doing. And so instead of having a worksheet that they color, they might create a, a project. They might, when they're studying, uh, like this week we're studying Italy and we're in Italy and children are doing pasta collages so they're having a sensory experience they're having a three-dimensional mm -hmm. experience they're counting um, they might you know measure by using the length of their body so it's a very we use a program in our kindergarten um, called everyday math and it's very much different than in my day um, they don't have the worksheets it's you learn by doing by measuring by counting by pouring um, in our science center you know you learn cause and effect so academics is a key part but it has to be approached in, in a very hands-on um, child-centered way I, I think that's very important because today kindergarten is very different than it used to be um, the expectations of the children are very high today. Yes, that's so, very true. I, if you look at our kindergarten, there's a number wall that goes along the whole wall. The children have to know the numbers. Um, they have a word wall that describes right. all the words that they have to know. And it's very, very, uh, very common in, in kindergarten nowadays. They have to be prepared for school. The other part I think about the, it's important though, is the self-image. Their confidence in themselves and their, their love of learning. That's mm -hmm. our philosophy. We want them to enjoy the process of learning because that carries on for the rest of their lives. Oh, terrific. And just one more thing. Um, there's some general things to know, like how important is ratio to child? That's oh. a, an issue that always comes up. Extremely important. Um, there are state standards um, for li uh, licensing ratios. Um, for example, it's a one to four ratio for the state. Um, our school is NACI accredited, which is the National Association for the Education of Young Children, and they have even lower standards. It has to be a three to one ratio in the infant room. And NACI has um, a whole website that will list accredited centers throughout the country so that you know that accreditation is a much higher standard of excellence. You have to meet very rigid criteria to be able to um, achieve that credential of accreditation. Okay, terrific. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, if you have any more questions about child care, Kathy would be happy to help you. Sure. She could be reached at 908-231-7800. Or you can um, actually reach the National Education of Young Children at 1-800-424-2460. Or, of course, go to the Golden Key, Real Golden Key Realty website and we'll have it posted under Tips from Terry. Hi, we're back with Kathy and Kangaroo, and we're going to speak a little bit about uh, pool safety today because it's a very big concern when people are looking at houses and there's a pool in the yard. So, Kathy, Kathy seems to be a little bit of an expert because she has a pool at her school and we're going to talk about the safety of a pool. Yeah, well, this is our first year at Kangaroo Kids for having a swimming pool and we're actually doing swimming lessons with the children but it took us a long time to make that decision because pool safety is a really important factor. Um, and some of the things I think that parents should look for when they're looking at homes and deciding on whether they want a pool. A pool can be a lot of fun, a lot of fitness, it gets the children off the computer, but there's also a lot of safety issues to consider. Um, some of the things that parents want to look at as far as environmental would be the fencing, making sure they have adequate fencing around the pool, making sure that the pool is always locked when they're not there. Nowadays they also have a lot of safety alarms so that they can put them in the pool and that if a child falls in or something like that, an alarm sounds. Um, so that's something that's fairly new that helps with pool safety. And I understand they also have out now things you can put a clip on your child's wrist, right? Mm -hmm. And then the alarm goes off right, right, right. if they go near the water or yes. touch the water, which yes. is great. And a big alarm sounds because my sister has that and let me tell you, it's uh -huh. loud. Yeah, so that's it's, fabulous. Yeah, it's really so important. How tall, how high do you think fences need to be? Um, um, there is, it, people would have to check with their towns because in zoning there are specific ordinances about how high a fence has to be. Um, and again, all these things never replace adequate supervision. It's right. really, really important to always have an adult present, um, always to have someone to supervise the children. And I would also recommend children at a very young age doing swim lessons at the mm -hmm. local Y or at their school if they have a, a pool like kangaroo kids. Um, because the more children learn, one of the first lessons we teach children is when they fall in, how do they get to the side? How do they get back and right. how do they get out of the pool? And that's an important um, aspect of it. Um, and so I think that the more you can teach children to be safe, and but nothing replaces, like anything else, mm -hmm. adequate supervision by adults. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Terrific.